All right. So Robin and Marco, I'm not sure if you've been in one of my virtual classes yet, but um, at the beginning of every class, I pull a positive affirmation and it kind of helps to realign ourselves, especially if we've had a tough day. So, and they're all really funny, cheery cards. Uh, this one is generosity. I give generously to those around me, no matter how much or how little I have. I know there is more than enough to go around and that the key is to allow it to keep going without stopping. If I stop the flow, I'm like the one person at the stadium who doesn't do the wave. So as we approach our practice, maybe be a little bit more generous to yourself, whether that means backing out of a certain posture or diving in, finding a little bit more exploration, be more generous with the ideas that you have about your body and what your body can do. So let's get started in a comfortable seated position. However is most comfortable, you can sit on a pillow, you can sit Japanese style or just cross-legged. And place your hands in your lap or on your knees and shut down your eyes. I want you to start just by filling all the way up with a deep breath of air. And then open mouth, let it go. Let's do that two more times. Fill all the way up. Let go of your worries on the exhale. Do that one more time. Breathe in. And releasing of your judgments as you exhale. And seal the lips. And breathe in and out the nose. Feeling the belly rise and fall. And allow your attention to turn inwards to your mat, to your practice, and within your body. And I want you to visualize around you a yoga bubble where nothing can permeate through its layer, but you can still see outside of your bubble to the things that you may need to work on in your life, the things that you might need to be more grateful for. But while you're in your yoga bubble, I want you to decide the attitude or the hour. I want you to acknowledge the intention you would like on your mat. And I want you to determine anything that doesn't serve you and doesn't belong within that bubble. And even if it's just for this next hour, I want you to welcome in a little bit more clarity within this space that you are establishing. Acknowledge when any negative thoughts seem to venture onto your mat and recognize them for what they are and choose to transform them into what you want them to be. And slow down your breath even more. And not just feeling your belly rise and fall, but can you feel your breath move higher into the rib cage and up into the heart center? And as you exhale, breathe out from the chest, the ribs, the belly. And continue that until your breath becomes as deep as possible and a slow eight count intake, and a slow eight count exhale. And allow your breath to serve as your ultimate guide here today. Allow your breath to decide if you should go deeper into a pose, when you need to back off of a posture, when your mind starts to race, Come back to your breath and find yourself in your yoga bubble in that state of clarity again. Let's take three more full breaths here, starting to employ the ujjayi exhale, 
cinch the muscles of the back of your throat. So as you exhale through the nose, you create a hissing sound. Listen for the sound of your exhale if you ever feel distracted. One more breath. And slowly allow the eyes to open from here. Start to circle out the body one direction. It doesn't matter which way, but seeing if you can move through the shoulders and lift the heart and tilt your chin and over exaggerate this movement. And then circle out your body the other way too. Maybe explore if there's anything new on that side, anything to discover. Notice where your hips have a tendency to lift. Let's go one more full round. Come back to neutral, beautiful work. Let's do some seated cat cows. Arch the spine, pull the shoulder blades back, look to the sky. And then round your spine, curl in. Inhale, pull the heart through. And exhale, round the spine. One more time, full of breath. And big exhale. We'll slowly come back to a neutral seat. I want you to stretch your legs long out in front of you. Flex your toes to the face. And then slowly walk your hands forward on either side of the calf. Now maybe you can grab the outer edges of your feet or your two big toes, and that's great and grand and all, but if you can't, I want you to hold on to your ankles or your calf. Now take an inhale, lengthen the spine further forward. Relax the shoulders, release the elbows, let your chin fall in, breathe into the back side of the leg. Go again, breathe in, and breathe out. Good work, we're gonna slowly rise up. Bring your right knee up to the sky, sole of the foot down to the ground, twisting to the right. Right hand to the base of the spine, left elbow up and over, outer side of the knee. Inhale, press the ground away with the right hand. Exhale, twist, turn your gaze past the right shoulder. Welcome in that neck stretch too. Breathe in. Breathe out and twist. Let's go one more time, inhale. And one more time with the exhale. Return back to neutral. This time I just want you to open your right knee to the side and slide the sole of your right foot to meet the inner left thigh, Janu Shirshasana. Square the torso over the leg, reach up. And seeing with this single leg, can you reach a little further out in front of you? Maybe this time you can grab the ball mount to your feet with the white knuckle 10 finger grip, but if not, no judgments, no concerns. Celebrate your body for what it can do today. Be generous with those nice thoughts. Let's go for three more full rounds of breath. Good work. We're slowly going to rise up. This time I want you to bend your left knee up with you. Grabbing a hold of your foot with your right hand and your knee with your left hand. We're going to circle the leg one direction. And this is to kind of get the synovial fluid within the joints going. We're going to do some hip stuff today, so we want to make sure we're nice and protected. And then circle the leg the other direction, just like you're stirring a pot, or if you're a witchy sister, your cauldron. And then circle the foot up and down, in and out, just like you're churning butter. And then we have one more rotation here. Go the other way. Good work. Slowly release the left leg long. Send the right leg long. 
take your hands behind you, fingertips point forward for Bhotanasana. Start to lift the hips up to the sky, hug your shoulder blades back, let your head relax. Now, if this is too much of a pose for you today, I want you to bend your knees at a 90 degree angle, creating an upside down tabletop. You're still getting all the same benefits. One more breath in. And then lower down as you exhale all the way out. Good, right leg will extend out, left knee points up to the sky. We're gonna twist to the left this time. Left hand base of the spine, right elbow, outer side of the knee. Big inhale, sit up tall. And as you exhale, twist, pushing your elbow against the knee to help you bring out the spine. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist in a little bit more. Let's go one more time, breathe in. And one more time, breathe out. Returning back to center, Janusha Shasana, keep your right leg long. Just open your left knee out to the side and slide the sole of your left foot to the inner right thigh. Flex the toes, inhale, reach up high. And reach all the way forward and see what you can grab here. Let your head fall in. Let the shoulders and elbows release. Take a few more breaths. Yeah, let's bring it all the way back up, bending your right knee as you rise. Grab a hold of your foot and your knee with your hands. And just like we did on the other side, I want you to slowly move your knee one direction in a circle stimulating the synovial fluid in the hip, and maybe you feel a little bit of that in your knee as well. And then circle it out the other way too. Explore that side. And then go up and down in a circle. And then one more rotation. Good, let that go, cross your feet at the ankles, place your palms on the ground in front of you and find your way into a tabletop shape, stacking the shoulders over the wrists, knees hip width distance. Take your left hand underneath your nose, swim the right arm up to the sky, gaze past the fingers. As you exhale, sweep the right arm underneath the torso, ear and bicep come down to the ground for thread the needle. With your right shoulder relaxed on the mat, Breathe into the space underneath the shoulder blade. And if it's feeling really good to you, maybe lift your left arm up to the sky, allowing this to add a little bit of weight or move into a half bind, left arm behind the back. Can you grab a hold of your inner right hip? How does that feel? Good. let's let that go slowly release. Unwind by placing your left hand down to the ground. Swim the right arm back up to the sky, gaze past the fingers. And then take the right hand underneath the nose. Let's do the other side, left arm lifts up. And then sweep the left arm underneath the torso, ear and bicep down to the earth. Feel free to take a moment to shut down your eyes, just to explore what it is you feel, where it is you're feeling it. Feel free to find the bind if it feels yummy. Good work, let's take it all the way out, nice and slow. Take the right hand next to your nose. Press into the hand, slowly rise up, swim the left arm with you. And release. Two hands to the mat, spread the fingertips, curl the toes, take your first downward facing dog. Pedal your knees a few times, shake your head yes and no. Stretch and yawn. And get all the fidgets out until finally you can find stillness in your upside down V shape of the body. Planting your heels even closer to the earth, feeling the turn on of the back of the calf. Lift the right leg up. As you exhale, step through to a lunge. 
you can keep your back knee lifted or drop your back knee down for our lunge pose. Inhale, arms reach up to the sky. Let's take an open twist to the right. Right hand back, left arm forward. Look at your right hand. Good, swim the arms back up to the sky. We're gonna continue this movement. Exhale, open up towards the right, arms parallel. Good, one more time. Inhale, arms reach up. One last open twist to the right. Let's pause. Take your hands to prayer. And left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Twisted lunge. Push your elbow against the knee to help you ring out through the spine. Gaze past the shoulder. Keep your legs turned on for three, two, one, two hands come down to the ground, straighten out through both legs and forward fold, forehead to the shin. Now naturally the right hip likes to drop in this posture. Can you make the conscious effort to roll the left hip down and pull the right hip back? You're gonna feel a little bit more sensation as you do so. Good work, re-bend into your front knee. Step to the top of the mat. Slide your hands up to your shins. Halfway lift, hug the shoulder blades behind you. Exhale, melt all the way down. Melt your upper body over the legs. And then inhale, slowly rise up. Reach up towards the sky. Palms meet overhead. And hands find heart center. Exhale, samasthiti. Inhale, sweep the arms up to the sky. Let's exhale, forward fold all the way down to the ground. Hands slide to the shin, halfway lift. This time as you exhale, plant the palms, step your feet to the back of the mat, high plank pose. Let's go ahead and hold it here for a moment. Deciding if today you are working on building your arm strength, I want you to bring your knees down. Now if you've established core and arm strength to do a push-up, shift the body weight forward, Bend into the elbows halfway down in Chaturanga. Pull the heart through into a back bend. You can lift your hips or keep them planted. And then over the toes, as you exhale, downward facing dog. Lift the left leg up. Take a breath. Exhale, step all the way through to a lunge. Keep in mind you have the option to bring your right knee down for more stability. Otherwise, hug the inner thighs, reach up to the sky, take a deep inhale. Open twist to the left, exhale, reach your left hand back, look at your left hand. Good, again, inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, twist to the left. Good work, one more time, inhale, arms sweep. Exhale, open twist, pause there. Take your hands to prayer and your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Twisted lunge. Push your left hand into the right hand to help you ring out the spine even further. See if you can bend a little bit lower into your hips. For three, two, one. Wide leg pyramid. Hands come down to the ground on either side of the front foot. Straighten out your both legs and melt down forehead to shin. Big stretch along the back of the left leg. And again here, I want you to make the conscious effort to drop your right hip down and to lift the left hip up just a tap. Good, bend into your front knee, step to the top of the mat. Take a halfway lift, hands to your shin, long spine. Exhale, melt all the way down. Press through the feet, inhale, slowly rise up, reach to the sky. Hands, spine, heart center, exhale. Move into some sun salutations, reach up with your breath. Forward fold, exhale, all the way down. Take a halfway lift, breathe in. As you breathe out, plant the palms, step your feet to the back of the mat. Bring your knees to the floor if needed. And then on your next exhale, bend your elbows halfway down, low plank. Inhale, heart pulls through, hug the shoulders back. Over the toes, exhale. 
exhale, downward facing dog. Let's take one breath in. Take one breath out. Good work, up to the toes. Bend the knees, step or float forward. Halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, straighten out through the spine. Uttanasana melts all the way down. Press down, slowly rise up, reach your arms to the ceiling. Hands to heart center, exhale. Good, let's do that two more times. Inhale, extend up. Swan dive forward, exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step it back, high plank. This time, lower directly down, low plank. Upward facing dog, inhale. Over the toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Keep in mind, if at any point you need to skip your vinyasa, you're more than welcome to wait here. And then inhale to the toes. Bend the knees, step or float forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Melt down, exhale. Press down, rise up, take a full deep belly breath all the way in and up, reach to the sky. Sama Sitihi, hands find heart center. One more time, inhale to find length. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Relax, step it back, high plank through chaturanga with your exhale. Find a back bend, hug your shoulder blades behind you. Over the toes, downward facing dog. Take one breath in. Take one breath out. Up to the toes. Bend the knees, step or float forward. Halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Melt all the way down, Uttanasana. Let's slowly rise up. This time as you do, I want you to float your left thigh with you, one-legged mountain pose. Find your balance, steady your gaze and then kick the left leg back behind you, forming in a capital letter T shape with the body. From here, bend your right knee and step back to a crescent lunge, just like we were before. Reach your arms up. Let's open twist to the right. Exhale, gaze past the right hand. Good, inhale, both arms reach. Open twist to the right again, exhale. One more time, breathe in. Breathe out, open up. Hands to prayer, twisted lunge. Left elbow, outer side of the right knee. Push your top palm into the bottom hand, twist even more. This time I want you to look down at your right foot. See if you can push heavily in through your front foot and step the left foot to meet the right foot, top of the mat, stay in a twisted chair. Keep your hips nice and low, 90 degree bend to the knees if possible. Gaze up past the right shoulder for three, two, one, forward fold all the way down, long legs. Halfway lift, inhale, exhale, melt. Let's inhale, slowly rise. This time you're gonna float the right thigh with you, one-legged Tadasana. Find your balance, steady your gaze. And when you're ready, kick the right leg back, forming a capital letter T shape with the body. Right toes remain flat, standing leg is long. Bend your left knee, step back, crescent lunge. Just like we were in before, if you need to bring your back knee down, do so. Take an inhale, open twist to the left this time. Look at your left hand. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, arms reach up. Open up to the left. Last time, breathe in. And 
and twist, breathe out. Let's pause for a moment. Hands to prayer. Twisted lunge, right elbow, outer side of the knee. Push your top palm into the bottom hand, bring out a little bit more. Now look down at your left foot. Start to push down a little bit more through your left foot till you can step your right foot to the top of the mat next to your left foot. Stay in your twisted chair. Again, I want you to look up past the left shoulder. Draw the left shoulder blade away from the ear. Sit down two more inches for three, for two. One forward fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, melt down. This time, separate your feet hip width distance. Rise up one vertebra at a time. As you rise up, I want you to lift as high to your tippy toes as possible. There we go. Arms come parallel to the ground. Pull your shoulder blades back and slowly get, begin to bend your knees. Now, pay attention to your heels. If you're losing the height in the heels because you're bending your knees more than you should, you're losing the purpose of the pose. We wanna stretch the underside of the feet. So lift your heels up, even higher. Higher than that, there we go, I see it. Sit down two more inches for three, two, one. Rise up to the tippy toes, reach to the sky. Forward fold all the way down. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Exhale, melt all the way down again. Let's rise back up. Swim your arms to the sky. Float the right thigh with you. Figure four. Right foot to the left thigh. Flex the toes. Take your hands to prayer. Now before going anywhere, we want to make sure we have our balance. So push your big toe into the earth. Push your pinky toe into the earth. If you need to hold onto a wall or a chair, you can do that as well. Let's slowly, when you're ready, begin to bend your left knee. Now, as you begin to bend your left knee, you're going to start to feel sensation along the outer right hip. I only want you to go right up to where your edge is. I don't want you to go beyond the edge. Now, eventually, if you can go further, you can place your hands to the ground and melt in forehead to your shin. Good work, hands to prayer, slowly rise all the way up. I want you to float your right thigh parallel to the ground, keep your hands at heart center. Right hand to the inside of the knee, left hand to the left hip. Open up like Captain Morgan from here. Knee to the right side of the room, tuck the tailbone underneath you. And again, if you ever need to hold on to a wall or a chair, you have your left hand very available here. Beautiful. Can we transition this into tree pose? Let's give it a shot. Either placing your right foot to the inner left calf or up above the knee to the inner thigh. Hands to heart center. Steady your gaze. Pull up on the left thigh. Press down into your big toe. Good. Let's do some arm stuff. Reach your arms up to the sky. And I want you to explore an arm variation today that you've never done. Maybe it's cactusing your elbows at 90 degrees, interlacing 10 fingers behind your head. Maybe find a prayer behind your back. Feel free to get creative. Let's stay right there for three, for two. On one, swim your arms up to the sky. Hands to prayer. Release the right foot down. Go ahead and shake out your left leg. All right, let's do all those things on the other side. Maybe this next side is your magical side. So spread your right toes. We're gonna float the left thigh and place your left foot on the right thigh in your figure four leg shape. Again, wall, chair, whatever you need to do to stay balanced. Hands find heart center.
steady your gaze at one spot that doesn't move. And when you're ready, slowly bend into your, uh, into your right knee, excuse me. As you bend your knee, acknowledge the sensations along the outer left hip. Acknowledge if you can maintain your breath and your composure, then you can go deeper by placing your hands to the ground and forward folding. If your breath is stagnant or not existent or erratic, I want you to come out of the pose a little bit to where you can breathe fluidly again. Really good work. Take your hands to heart center, slowly rise up. Float the left thigh in front of you. Modified gate pose, right hand to your hip. Left hand to the inside of your knee. Open the knee to the left. Tuck the tailbone underneath you. Now make sure you're even flexing your left toes. The tighter you are, the lighter you become, the easier it becomes. Good job. We're going to transition this into our tree pose. So you're going to place your left foot either to your calf or picking up the foot to place it to the inner thigh. Hands find prayer, tailbone tucks. First and foremost, find your balance, find your breath, and then you get to add on the fluffy stuff, extending your arms up to the sky. You can take the same or a different mudra, maybe thumb and index finger together with all the rest of your fingers pointed straight down to the ground. You can close your eyes or gaze up here. Let's hold it. For five, four, three, two, one. Arms extend up high and bring your hands to heart center prayer. Good work. Left foot down, shake out the right leg. And then wiggle your feet, open mat with distance out, turning the toes for malasana. Arms swim up to the sky. And as you exhale, bring your hands to prayer, slowly sit down into a squat. Now, if you have knee issues, I don't want you to sit down all the way, but if your knees are healthy, feel free to tuck the tailbone, pushing your elbows to the inside of your knees. Now pay attention how much body weight is rolling to the inner arches of your feet. Can you press the outer arches of your feet into the ground so that your tailbone lifts an inch? It makes you work a little bit harder but it also makes sure that the muscles around the knees are engaged so that we're protecting the joint itself. Let's find a twist from here. Place your right hand down to the outside of the right foot. Lift your left arm to the sky, gaze past the fingers. Relax your left shoulder, let go a little bit. Good, let's bring our hands back to prayer. Again, I want you to make sure that you're not relying on sinking into the hips, but instead you're rolling body weight to the outer hip, lift the tailbone, and then place your left hand down to the ground. Reach your right arm up to the sky. A lot of thigh work going on here. You can do this. Relax your left, or relax your right shoulder, excuse me. Good. Let's come all the way back to center. One more time, hands to prayer, sit up tall. And then take your hands down to the ground, lift your hips up, forward fold. Bend one knee at a time, shake your head yes, and shake your head no. All right, wiggle your feet hip width distance. Lift high to the tippy toes, and come all the way down into a squat, dropping your knees to the earth. So the main point, I want you to make sure that your toes are curled underneath you, doing this toe squat that doesn't feel good. So sit up nice and tall, hips to heels. And we're just gonna hang out here for a moment. At first, you're like, this is easy peasy, no big deal. I promise you things are gonna get so intense and you're gonna think about mean thoughts and we may not be friends at the end of this, but please, I really hope so. Um, let's see if you can breathe. Just breathe. Deep inhale through the nose, fill up the belly, the ribs, the chest. Breathe out from the chest, the ribs, the belly. 
You can do this. Relax the shoulders, relax the face, breathe in again, all the way up. Breathe all the way back out. Do that one more time. Good, take your hands down to the ground. Tops of the feet to the earth. Go ahead and sit back to your heels. Feel all those crackles and pops. Sit up nice and tall again. Not too bad, right? Throw all the fascia underneath the feet. From here, I want you to keep your knees hip width distance. And I want you to stay exactly how you are if you have knee issues. If you have super intense knee issues, you can even grab a pillow and sit on a pillow if it's too much compression in that joint. Otherwise, your knees are doing pretty good. We're gonna go into Vajrasana. Knees are hip width distance. I want you to lift your hips up and bring your feet wider than hip width distance. From here, you're gonna to try to slide your glutes on the ground in between your feet. Good. Only if your hips are on the ground and there's no pain, then you can walk back a hand elbow at a time, eventually laying on the ground, grabbing your elbows overhead. Now, if you're sitting upright because your knees just maybe aren't in the best condition, you can still get the benefits by placing your hands down on the ground behind you and just lift your pubic bone up to the sky. This is gonna create a stretch to the quads and a pinching sensation to the knees and ankles. Really good work. Now, just as slowly as you brought yourself down, I want you to ease yourself up. Coming into a tabletop shape, send your right leg to the back of the mat, curl the toes under, and just pulse forward and back a few times. Okay, we're gonna let that go. Stretch the left leg back. Really good job. Two knees down, spread the fingertips, curl the toes, downward facing dog. Let's take this into hip roll, right leg up to the sky. Bend your knee so your foot falls to the left side of the rib. Look underneath your left armpit, try to find your foot. And start to crinkle, wiggle, roll, circle the knee, circle the ankle. And then pull it all the way through. Right knee behind the right hand, left leg long behind you. There's gonna be a good handful of people that this pose does not serve. If you found yourself in this pose and immediately you're gritting your teeth or grunting, I want you to do this pose on your back where you're gonna lay down with your knees pointed to the sky, take your right foot on the left thigh, and then you're gonna hug your left knee in using the use of your arms. So we're all built a little bit differently, so don't make it a priority to look like anyone else other than you. Now, if you're upright and you're feeling pretty good about it, let's start to walk our hands forward. Melting down, belly to your shin, chest to the ground, forehead to the earth, close the eyes. This is a huge hip stretch. Breathe consciously into your hip, seeing if you can create a little bit more space within. All right, take your time, one hand over the next, start to sit all the way back up. From here, we're gonna pivot onto the right hip and swing your left leg all the way around in front of you. So for those who have knee sensitivities, I simply want you to put your left foot on your right knee. That might be hard if you have tight hips. So 
You can also put your foot on top of your calf, whatever works for you today. Now let's say your knees are feeling pretty good. Let's start to work into our half lotus pose. So you'll be taking your left foot and slide it up into your right hip crease. Whichever positioning you're in, I want you to make sure you're flexing your toes, especially if you want to preserve the health of your knees. If your knee is floating, place your left hand to your thigh, add a little bit of weight. Let's say your knees are stacked like mine in the screen in front of you. You can walk forward and melt down. Now let's say you want to add on a little arm and you don't want to fold down. You can rise up. And working on the half bind, you're just going to take your left hand behind your back and grab your big left toe. From here, try to fold it. Good, let's let that go slowly, release, rise up. Release the grip that you have. Unwind the legs, send them long in front of you. Let's do another Paschimottanasana. Let's see if we get a little bit farther this time. Reach up, flex the toes. Reach all the way forward. Are you victorious? It's okay if you're a little extra stiff today. I woke up like the Tin Man myself. Inhale, slowly rise up. Take your hands behind you. We've done this. Point your toes, lift the hips again for Bhotanasana. If this is still too much, I want you to bend your knees at a 90 degree angle, still get the benefits. For three, two, one. Come all the way down. This one's super funky. This is Mari Chasana C. Bend your right knee up to the sky. Your left leg is going to stay long out in front of you. I'll give you a frontal view just so you can see what I'm doing. Take your right hand and you're going to come in front of your right shin with your right arm. Right hand in front of the right shin. And then you're going to try to wrap your arm around your leg, try to grab your right hip. Now your pose may look different from mine and that's okay. Now if you're here and this is enough, Reach the left arm out in front of you, see what you can grab. Left foot, left calf, whatever, it doesn't matter. Or if you're going further, we're gonna take this into a bind. Wrap the left arm behind your back and see if you can grab your hands. I'm gonna give you the side view too in case we're still a little lost. Now, whichever positioning you're in, drop the chin into your chest and allow your forehead to melt down towards the knee. Good work. We're bringing it all the way back out. Sit up nice and tall. Cross your feet at the ankles. Place your palms on the ground. Downward facing dog. We have one last side to go into. Lift the left leg up. Bend at the knee, finding a hip roll. Gaze underneath the right armpit. Find your foot. Crinkle, wiggle, roll, circle it out. Lubricate the joints again. And then let's take it in the half pigeon. Ekapada Raja Papatasana, left knee behind the left hand, right leg long behind you. Flex the front toes, sit up nice and tall. And again, maybe on this side, your body is kind of groaning and it doesn't like it. You're going to get exactly the same benefits if you do this on your back with your left foot on the right knee. And then you'll just hug the right knee in. Otherwise, Right, or excuse me, left toes are gonna flex on this side. Sit up tall and start to walk your hands forward. Melting down, eventually belly to your shin, chest to the ground, forehead to the earth, close the eyes. And take the deepest breaths that you can consciously pull in and replicate that depth as you breathe all the way back out. With every exhale, 
Allow your body dive a little bit deeper into this posture, exploring what the hips might be telling you. And our hips hold a lot of worries and a lot of anxiety. So I want you to notice, not just on a superficial level, but on an emotional, mental level, what is coming up for you today? And then let's slowly rise all the way up. Take your time. We're going to pivot on to the left hip. Swing the right leg out in front of you. So just like you did on the other side, you can place your right foot on your left knee or your right foot on your left calf, whatever works best. If you're working towards the half lotus today, slide the foot higher up into the hip crease. Now, if your right knee is lifting, flex your toes, place your right hand to your thigh, add a little bit of weight. If your knees are stacked, you can walk forward, melt down. And of course, there's always one more level to be had if you wanna take it on. You're gonna rise back up doing a half bind first, wrapping the right arm behind the back, grab a hold of your big left toe, and then slowly fold forward over the leg. Good work. We're going to rise all the way up, release the grip, send the legs long out in front of you. Let's do one more Paschimottanasana for good measure. Flex the toes, reach up to the sky, and reach all the way out in front of you. Your hamstrings are going to love you today, I promise. Stretch them out, melt down. And then inhale, rise up. One more Pravotanasana, work, working on that arm strength. Hands behind you, lift the hips up. You got this. Let your head fall back. And relax, hips come down to the earth. Bend your left knee up to the sky. Mari Chasana, seat. So we're gonna start by taking our left hand in front of the left shin, left arm in front of the left shin, and see if you can wrap the arm behind the back to you and grab it. Maybe you're grabbing absolutely nothing, but keep your arm out there. One day you're going to get it. Now, if you have a decent half bind, you can double bind with your right hand grabbing a hold of your left hand, or simply reach your right arm forward, grab a hand hold, either your ankle, calf, or foot. And melt all the way down, hugging the left knee in towards the bottom. Nice compression to the hip joint. Follow your breath. Let's do this three more inhales. Slowly release whichever positioning you're in. Begin to rise all the way up and find a comfortable seated position facing forward. Let's get into a little bit of neck and shoulders before we find our way to the ground. Sweep your arms up towards the sky for eagle arms. Right arm sweeps underneath the left arm. Cross wrap, twist the arms for your palms find prayer or hug your shoulders. Start to lift the elbows up, shoulder height. If you have your hands at prayer, can you bring your hands away from your face? Breathe into the underside of the scapula. Now, if you're feeling extra ooey gooey, you wanna go a little further and your shoulders are supporting you through this, pull your belly in and slowly round forward, bringing your elbow towards your belly button.
Let that go. Slowly rise up. Reach up. Arms to the sky. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Left arm underneath the right arm. You're either twisting the arms, palms to prayer, or hugging the shoulders. Start to elevate the elbows up shoulder height. Notice exactly where you belong. Maybe you can bring your hands away from your face. And maybe if you'd like to nest, hollow out your belly, slowly round forward. Now, if there's ever an inkling of a red flag being flown in your body, I want you to pay extra special attention to that. And notice that maybe each side isn't equal. Take a few more breaths wherever you are. Really good job. Let's slowly rise up, unwind the arms, reach to the sky, bend at your right elbow, grab your right elbow with your left hand, and lean to the left side. Come back to center, place your right hand on your left ear, and reach your left arm to the side as you let your right ear fall to the right shoulder. There we go. If this is too much, you can place your left hand on your thigh. All right, come all the way back to center. This time I want you to place your right hand down to the ground, left arm to the ceiling, lean to the right. Soften up into your right shoulder and your right elbow. Create a little bit more space between shoulder and ear. All right, we're gonna do all of that on the other side. So slowly rise up, reach both arms high. Bend your left elbow, grab your elbow with the right hand. And we're gonna lean over towards the right. Good, inhale, rise back up, place your left hand on your right ear. Reach your right arm out wide and let your head fall towards the left shoulder. Now, if this is too much, I want you to release your right hand to your thigh. Good, we're rising all the way back up. Lift your left arm up and place the left hand down to the ground. Send your right arm high, lean to the left. Stretch along the right side body. Awesome work, slowly rise, reach all the way up to the sky. And sweep the arms all the way back behind you. Interlace 10 fingers, squeeze the palms and drive the knuckles into the earth. Arch your upper back, pointing your heart to the sky. Good, forward fold over the legs, arms reach up to the ceiling. On your inhale, rise back up. Place your hands on either side of the hips. Send your legs long. Guide yourself down to your mat. Once your back is on the floor, send your legs up to the sky from legs up the wall, flexing the toes down towards the face so it looks like you're supporting the ceiling. Now, if you are familiar with shoulder stand, you are more than welcome to work into it now. If you have any neck issues whatsoever, I would prefer that you did not work into shoulder stand. Now, if you are in legs up the wall, I want you to squeeze your belly and squeeze your thighs. There we go. And just let all the blood flow down to the crown of your head. Now, can you shut down your eyes and take five slow, deep breaths? I know this is challenging. If you need a little bit more support, you can place your hands underneath your hips, and it's going to help you bring your sacrum closer to the mat. You have three more full breaths to go. You can do it. Really awesome job. Slowly bend your knees. Place the soles of the feet down to the earth. We're going to go for one bridge or your option of wheel. Press through the feet, lift the hips up. Interlace 10 fingers behind the back and squeeze your palms and shoulders underneath you. See if you can relax your glutes a little bit as you push your big toes into the earth. 
healthy compression of the vertebrae. And then slowly release all the way back down. Open your arms out wide like airplane wings. Let your knees drop to the right and gaze to the left. Breathing into the base of the spine. Find any other variation that suits you a little bit better. And then bring your knees up and over to the left, gaze to the right. Slowly come back to center. Pull your knees into your chest. Offer yourself one more big bear hug and hold it tightly for five, four, three, two, and on one, extend your legs long, Shavasana pose. Let the toes flop open, palms face up. Let your eyes close and your body settles. And for two minutes, of your entire day. Can you simply be still? Even turning into your yoga bubble vision and setting a distance between you and anything outside of this yoga realm. And it's within these last few minutes that we reap the benefits of our hard work. We get to restore the body, rejuvenate the mind. I challenge you just to one more minute. Shut down. Now for yourself a moment, a chance to check in, to acknowledge if maybe you just need to stay here a few more minutes longer, feel free to do so. Otherwise, if you're ready to reawaken, invite a deeper breath in, and wiggle the fingers and the toes. And then send your arms all the way back behind you. Stretch from the fingers to the toes like you're waking up in the morning. And then pull two knees into your chest. Roll onto one side of the body into a fetal position. And from your fetal position, slowly rise up to a comfortable seat facing forward. Let your hands rest at prayer. Tilt your chin in towards your chest. Yoga's hard. Give yourself a huge congratulations for showing up for you. If it was easy, you wouldn't get the same rewards. So acknowledge, how do you feel now in comparison to the beginning of class? What is your new attitude? What is your new intention? 
and maybe today, you can be a little bit more generous to the kind thoughts that you welcome in your life or the service that you provide to others. Taking your yoga practice off the mat into the rest of your day with you. Please bow to your inner teacher. Namaste. Thank you all, it was a pleasure. Um, you are more than welcome to turn on your mics, uh, chat a little bit if you have some feedback, any epiphanies, 